Hinge is a psychological VR adventure horror game developed by Arcadia and also published by Arcadia. It's currently available on Steam and in this game you find yourself exploring an abandoned skyscraper where the laws of physics are broken and a multitude of strange things seem to occur minute to minute. It's recently had a significant performance update and I wanted to go in and see how it fares and also get some general first impressions of the game as a whole. So with that, let's jump in. Immersed Robot Hello everyone, welcome to Immersed Robot and in this video I wanted to take a look at Hinge. I was aware of this game a while ago, it first came out back in November last year in 2020 and uh, I did hear from various sources really that the game, well actually a lot of people were complimentary about the game itself but the overall general performance was the thing that dampened the experience. It was seemingly not well optimised and a lot of people had performance issues with this game when it first came out. It's had numerous updates since then and just recently the developer contacted me to tell me that they had a significant performance update a few days ago so they offered me a key to try it out and see what I think. So I thought I'd take a look as I am a fan of horror games in VR and this one looked pretty interesting to me. I was also interested to see how it performed as well. So I went into the settings first of all and just changed the resolution scaling up to high but kept pretty much everything else on the default settings. I also uh, turned the comfort options down as well. Um, just for reference I am running this game at 90Hz in the Valve Index headset so aiming for that 90 frames per second and also at 150% Steam VR super sampling setting. Now I did check and it doesn't seem that the Steam VR setting makes any difference in the game anyway so it seems to override that with its own resolution scaling in game. So I jumped into the game and I suppose the first thing that hits you is it, it looked good. Okay, now the lighting itself, it was relatively dark when you first go in, but it looked good. Um, you could tell that all the textures were pretty high and it just, you know, the overall atmosphere of it felt really good as well. Um, and the first surprise was that it, was, it seemed to be running fine for me on my system. Obviously, I'm running on a RTX 3080, but I will be going a little bit more in depth into performance shortly in the video. So during this first section, you just play through a short tutorial that sets up the controls and you follow this sort of apparition through these set of corridors, really. And it's very odd. It's very unnerving, I've got to say, you know. <laughs> VR horror is obviously quite an unnerving thing to play through anyway. And I've played through A Chair in a Room, Exorcist, Paranormal Activity, all of those games. Um, so I am a fan of VR horror and this one seemed to be doing things pretty well so far. Again, the lighting looked great in a lot of these sections. The textures looked great. The attention to detail as well looked great. Interaction, I was trying a few things as I went through, but there wasn't a great deal of interaction, but I suppose that's to be expected for this short tutorial section anyway. So it didn't bother me too much. So you find yourself initially within this sort of apartment in a skyscraper. You can manipulate various things, but a lot of the objects that you're able to manipulate are highlighted in green. So really interaction is quite limited, I will say. The interaction is probably a little bit disappointed, especially if you're coming from... It's probably wrong of me to compare any game, any indie developed game to Half-Life Alex, but it's sometimes a little bit jarring to come from a game like that to a game where you can't really interact with too much. And the physical interaction the physics themselves feel a little bit limited in all honesty but it's sort of on par with other VR indie developed games anyway so it's not too bad it's just something to keep in mind uh, the, the interaction is quite limited within this game one of the main things that hits me when I'm playing through this first section and again this is a first impressions video so this is not an in-depth review or anything like that but the first thing that came to me when I was playing through this is just how strange how obscure obscure and abstract and everything nothing makes sense within this game when you first play it and it's very difficult to latch onto any sort of narrative threads or anything like that in order to feel comfortable at any moment and I know horror often plays on those tropes where they don't want you to get comfortable with any nar narrative they want you to feel uncomfortable uh, to heighten the atmosphere and the mood of the horror and so I do understand why they've done this it's just that sometimes personal preference can play a big part in this now in a game like a chair in a room that also had this kind of abstract obscure nature to it where things didn't necessarily make sense but there was still this overall narrative 
guiding you through and that narrative wasn't too hard to follow. This one when I first started playing this game it was difficult to follow and I didn't honestly really know what was going on but the general idea I suppose was to collect clues to find out what was going on so I guess that as you progress through the game a little bit more then things will start to become clearer and the narrative will develop as the game progresses as well so you'll get a clearer idea of everything that's going on. During these early stages you don't have that it's very confusing there's not a lot to guide you through you're just at least i was just wandering around uh picking up objects and hoping for the best really a lot of the time um hopefully that changes as time goes on and it has this mechanic where once you start to smoke a cigarette you're taken to this place which is supposed to symbolize okay. you just relaxing and checking in with yourself really uh, you can check in on some of the clues that you found as you've wandered around this skyscraper it's a good little mechanic and you know i've not necessarily seen anything like exactly like this in another game so i did quite like this aspect of it and this seemed to be the focus of where you would start piecing together this this narrative which was missing from for the most part during these early stages so again graphics themselves but also sounds were the two things that stood out for me during this early section you know the game really does look good it's it looks good in that somber horror kind of way that we're used to really but yeah the, you sh i shouldn't take anything away from the graphical style or anything like that it really does look and feel the part so looking at the performance of this game i brought up fps vr and just checked it out and i could tell that it was already running pretty well for me and running the index at 90 hertz there there were very few stutters really. Um, again, I was running on pretty high settings within the game anyway, and with these settings, uh, 90 frames per second was pretty solid. There were certainly sections where it dropped, but it wasn't enough to worry about for the most part. Uh, most of the game, I would say, you know, 90 95% of the game was running fine. Um, and even on the FPS VR overlay at the bottom of the screen, you can see that the reprojection ratio is around four to five percent at this point um, but it drops and sometimes it goes up as well but yeah I mean obviously I'm playing on a RTX 3080 which is a more high-end card so that is obviously something to mention however I will say that when you look at these frame timings and the consistency of the frame timings that bodes well when looking at lower spec cards because as long as there's not wild fluctuations all the time then you can generally pick and choose settings in order to get the game running on lower end cards as well at least that's my experience with it so i think performance has definitely been worked on it's been one of the primary focuses i would need to refer to sort of trying it myself on a lower end card to be uh, absolutely certain of that but within the context of how i'm testing this the performance was pretty good pretty solid um but again further optimization for this game would definitely be welcomed so just some final thoughts from me on this i think Hinge is certainly an interesting title. The parts that worry me more than anything when playing through this is just how strange everything is, how jarring everything is, and there's nothing to latch onto to keep me wanting to play it at this early stage. Now, I do have plans to push through. If I feel the same way after two hours of play, I've played around about an hour so far, um, but if I feel the same after around two hours, then you know I'd probably think twice about continuing at that point because I feel at that point I need to know my goals. I need Need to know more of the law that's going on in the world and it needs to make sense a little bit more for me i guess that's the takeaway it just needs to make sense a little bit more and not be quite so obscure as it seems to be it's playing into that quite heavily and it's just i'm not sure that works for me in particular but then again if you're the kind of person that enjoys that kind of stuff the confusing nature of what this game is going for at the beginning then uh yeah certainly have a look at it so over here in the uk it's on steam for 15 pounds 49 and i guess it will be around sort of 20 dollars over in the us if you want to try it personally i want to play a little bit more before i fully recommend it or say don't buy it i want to see how it progresses i've got to say that it's not pulling me in as much as i hoped it would but there's certainly a lot here to like anyway so uh, don't dismiss it outright do look into it a little bit more and see if you think it's for you but anyway thank you very much for watching this video and i'll see you next time Please hesitantly tap the like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more concise and informative VR content. You can also join our Discord by clicking on the link in the description of this video.
and, as always, I'll catch you on the flippity flip.